Hi everyone, I'm Chris and today I'm going to be going to be uh, doing a little bit of a gear review overview on this bit of kit here. This is the TACU combat shirt from Proper. Um, it's in the ATEX FG pattern as you can see. The um, reason I wanted to do this particular item of equipment, uh, well I'll, I'll go into that in a minute, um, suffice to say I, I don't review every bit of gear that I buy but I wanted to take the time, take a few minutes to do this this shirt in particular, uh, like I say, for a few reasons. Um, they'll sort of they'll, they'll crop up as we're going through it. This isn't going to be massively in depth, but I just wanted to go over this one uh, just briefly, show you guys a bit about it. it. They've not been on the market too long. This design from uh, from Proper. They are. You can get them in the UK. You can get. I got this from UK Tactical. They're 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 at fifty pounds at the moment, which for a a combat shirt of this quality is is pretty good. I'm quite impressed by it. Um, proper, as any of you will know, they you know they, they do build their stuff to a high standard. Now, going straight into what I feel is probably the most important thing that I want to say, and the main thing that drove me to specifically make this video about this gear item was uh, something I found a little bit odd about the TACU. Um, now when you think of combat shirts, under body armour combat shirts of this type, you think of arid environments, high temperatures, uh, wearing body armour. Um, so when, when, you, when you're wearing something like this you, you want it, you expect you know, minimal heat retention, good airflow. Uh, comfortable in in those heat uh, heated days, hot environments. This is this is my main gripe with the shirt. Now I, I hate to sort of come straight in and make my first point a negative, but th this is something that I found really surprising about it and kind of weird in a way. It does have a a good side to it as well, but it's it's more of a negative. I think the main problem with this shirt is that. To my mind, this is a combat shirt, an underbody armor combat shirt, for the winter. It's not very good in the summer. This thing is bloody hot to wear. This it keeps heat and sweat in, really, really. I mean, a, a lot. It's, to put it basically, um, you know, just breaking it down simply. The the problem with it is that the materials they've used. There's nothing wrong with the actual materials, the, the blends. It's um, the actual the sleeve parts are. Uh, let me have a look. Remind myself. Yeah, the sleeves are 65% polyester, 35% cotton. That's not perfect. There are you know there's better materials, but it is the ripstop. You can see the grid pattern in there when you're looking at it. And it's good. It's resilient. It's robust. The uh, the centre portion here is 60/40, 60% being cotton, 40% polyester. Again. You know, it's perfectly good. It's not fire resistant, but this this particular item isn't aimed at really that side of the market. It's not IR compliant. It's not fire resistant. It's not berry compliant either. So for US military guys, this is no good on all those three counts. Unfortunately, um, I, I wouldn't if I had the Multicam one for example. Um, it may look very close to MTP, but I wouldn't wear one of these in Afghanistan. Really not recommended for that at all. So yeah, um, that that heat retention issue. It's like I say, the, the materials they've chosen are good. The issue is the the thickness, the density of the material that I've gone with, it, well, that they've gone with even. The, the 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 best way I find to test how thick a material is on a on an item is not not from the outside. Just actually put your hand into the inside and just and just feel it just to test in you know you can you can just with just by touch you can get a good sense if you've you know handled a fair bit of gear before from different manufacturers different items of combat clothing you can you can get a good sense straight away just by touch of what kind of a density of material they've used for this and you 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 know you get your hands on this shirt and straight away you just think fucking hell you know this this is heavy this is heavyweight stuff now, as a quick comparison, the other combat shirt I've got just here in my room at the moment, this is the True Spec combat shirt, I can't remember the exact name of it. Now this I've worn in quite hot uh, conditions, um, Only, I mean it's only been days that have been hot for Britain, so comparatively, yeah, not exactly boiling, 
but I mean, you know, I'm used to quite cold temperatures or sort of average temperatures, so anything even approaching 30 degrees Celsius for me seems really bloody hot. Now, this this one, like I say, from True Spec, this has been pretty good. If you if you go for the the old touch test on the inside of this, you can just feel it. It's a, it's a nice thin material. The actual the centre torso portion here, nice and thin and lightweight. In terms of actual weight in grams, I did a quick comparison test just by hand, very roughly, a little bit earlier on the True Spec versus the proper. I didn't notice a particularly large difference, but. It, like I say, the, the problem is just that this design, it, it's not its not ideal for the summer months or the desert at all. I mean, I know in some states over in the US you get crazy, crazy temperatures in the summer, you know, really quite dangerous to be um, spending all day at an airsoft game or on the firing range or whatever it is, paintball or whatever it is you might do you've got to really focus on keeping hydrated, making damn sure you've got a good 2-3 litre hydro bladder on you, keeping that water on, keeping out for the, the signs of heat stroke. You don't want to be wearing this shirt, really, really don't recommend it for that. It does have a lot of good features. We'll, we'll go through a few, you know, a couple of them. Um, starting off, in the centre here, you've got your standard combat shirt type zip. Um, it's, it's all, uh, you know, it's it's all well stitched. I've had a good close up look at everything. It's all nicely put together. The actual zip. Now let me see. Unfortunately, it does go through the weaker torso material. They haven't extended the heavier 6535 to mount the zip to as you would. That's what I prefer, but it, it's all right. It's perfectly solid enough, it, and that is it. That certainly, it, it makes it a lot quicker to get the shirt on and off a lot easier. The shoulder pads, you've got some, um, you've got some baffles here, and you've got the thinner material just underneath on either side of the shoulder. That does help a little bit with ventilation, especially when you've got, you know, you've got your armor plate carry on, and that's all covered up, so you can get a little bit of airflow coming through under there, and very slightly, but it's better than nothing. On the sleeves, now this is this is where I think this shirt really shines. You've got three pockets on every sleeve and they are very, very well put together. You've got on the upper torso here, on your upper arm, upper arm even, sorry. Got a fairly, fairly good sized pocket in there. With a zip again, nice sturdy YKK zips, colour match. Got another one on the lower arm, just above your wrist. <coughs> And then there it is, if I can find it. This is the one, one point where these sleeves actually differ slightly. On the left sleeve here, you've got sewn together little uh, openings there that'll be for putting pens in. And then on your right sleeve, you've got a pull tab, Velcro, and you can put something like a field dressing, maybe some IR chem lights, whatever, little bits of kit into that, a map, you know, all that sort of stuff. And you would think, now in my personal experience, a good way to judge if a pocket has been well positioned and well designed is if you are, if you become conscious of the gear that you've stored into it when you've put stuff into them. If you don't notice that there's stuff in there, then that, that's, I think, a sign of a well designed item of uh, camouflage uniform. And that, that is what I quite like. I mean, obviously, if you put something really heavy into a sleeve pocket, You'll be running around and it's going to bounce and swing around there, and that's not going to be comfortable. But for example, I, I tested it uh, running around. I just put um, a pair of gloves into that pocket there, and I, I thought that I would become quite conscious of it there, and it would be an, an annoyance. Hopefully, you guys out there can sort of um, identify with that point. Um, I put a pair of gloves in there. They weren't particularly thick or heavy ones, but you know they. For, for a pocket that size, it was a fairly sized item, and I, I totally forgot I put them in there. I genuinely, it came to the end of the day, and um, I was thinking, you know, where the, hell, where the hell have I put my Under Armour gloves? And uh, I'm sort of checking myself, and I went, oh, oh, unzip, and there they were. So quite happy with that. Uh, you've got your, as you would expect, a combat shirt. You've got a good, good field glove, loop velcro, again colour matched. 
on each sleeve. Moving around to the back, got another tape of it here. I see this on a few different shirts, I'm not sure what it's for. I think this is maybe for name tapes, something of that variety. Looking at the actual wrist area, you've got your, as you might expect, fairly common type. Hook Velcro, loop Velcro, you can change your uh, the adjustments of your cuff there to, to suit your wrist. Maybe you've got a watch on, maybe you've got a GPS, stuff you want to put over um, when, when you're putting the shirt on, you want to be able to just put it over or take the shirt off and leave it on there. Uh, heavy gloves maybe, something like that. Or you want to keep snow, sand, wind, rain, whatever from going up there. It's good to see. But another feature that really says to me that this is a combat shirt to wear in the winter is if you look inside the end of the sleeves here, they've got a sort of um, a, a kind of extension made of the same material as the torso portion. And what it is, is you've got holes for your thumbs there and sort of you know hand, hand warmer pieces. And that's not that's not something you're going to want in in the uh, you know in June in Afghanistan. It's I mean I know the nights over there get cold or certainly colder than the day, but not during the summer. Um, and yeah, you've got your mountainous regions and that sort of thing. But you know, looking outside in the general you know looking at the rest of the world, that that is a feature. I mean, my standard issue. DPM fleece that I got when I went to recruit training years ago that had a thumb hole in the end of the sleeve so that if you just pull the sleeve slightly further down you could tuck your thumb in and all of that portion of your hand would be covered with the wool and material and it kept your hands warmer and obviously a fleece you know that's it's the sort of item that you, you know, when you're wearing CS95 the old British issue uh, uniform system the, the fleece is something you, you haven't, you know, it's got to be, the mercury's really got to be dropping low for you to be putting that on. And the fact it has this feature in common with this, with the TACU from Proper here, that, that to me, combined with the heavy weight of the material, it just really says winter combat shirt. Now, you can, you can buy the TACU, it comes in, in the ATAX FG, you can get it in the original ATAX AU, you can also get it in Multicam. The great thing about the multicam in particular is that it, the, set, the torso portion is colour matched. You have the camouflage pattern, and for for around fifty pounds in the UK, I'm not sure what you'd be paying in the US, probably about sixty dollars ish. There are, there aren't many options out there for a fully patterned underbody armor combat shirt in the multicam. I mean, if you look at the other examples, you've got the. Arcteryx shirt that I, I purchased fairly recently, the Talos half shell, that has this pattern center portion in the multicam, but that's $200. You've got the Plat Attack, that's uh, Australian made, I believe, that they, that's, if I remember right, around $120, $140. You've got the Integrated Combat Equipment, that's Ice Tactical, they make a fire resistant combat shirt, slightly different design, but again, you've got the full pattern. That is in the region of about 160, I think. Um, I, I, I have one myself, but I bought it almost a year ago now. I can't quite remember, so I apologise for that. But that's the good thing about the multicam. You know, there's other companies out there making combat shirts in the ATAX patterns, and you just get a plain coloured torso. Having that pattern torso is a nice little feature, especially if you want to wear maybe a chest rig that doesn't particularly cover up much of your chest and has nothing on the back, no back panel, or you're wearing a webbing setup like the old style, um, whether it be PLC or Alice, or you've gone with a modern belt setup using Molly. You know, your torso isn't going to be covered. It's nice to have that camouflage. If you want the camouflage pattern and you want a combat shirt because you want to stay cool because it's freaking hot outside, it's nice to have that option. and. The proper does give you that at a very low price. I mean, you're talking about half the price, pretty much, of a lot of those other options out there. And especially in the UK, you can't even buy the Arcteryx or the Ice or the Plat Attack. You have to import them. And then you've got the shipping costs. Some uh, retailers, especially in America, they won't even export these items. And then as soon as it gets to UK customs, you're going to get 
VAT and handling fees, etc, etc, etc. And for a lot of people, those costs start adding up and it's a lot of money. So the proper is going to look like an attractive option, but I would really stress to you guys, if you're looking for a combat shirt to wear under a play carrier um, in those, you know, June, July, August, in those hot months when the sun's really being down, don't, don't go for this. Really don't. On the flip side to that, personally, I, I don't like wearing the standard old school combination of a t-shirt and, um, you know, what you're, this is my old, my old Combat Soldier 95s, your standard sort of lightweight jacket as we call it, or you know, just a combat, um, just a shirt, camouflage shirt, was generally what it would be referred to. I'm not a fan of that old school system anymore, but I find it uncomfortable and just hot and you get pressure points really not ideal. I, I prefer to wear an underbody on a shirt all of the time, but then you've got the issue that all of them up to now have been designed for the summer, for the for hot months, but now we've got the proper. So basically this now, this is going to be my winter uh, clothing item of choice for my upper body. I'll probably buy another one so that I've got a couple of different pattern options. May, I might go for the multicam. Um, you know, for the month sort of October, November, December, January, February, when it when it is cooler, I still want to be able to wear my plate carrier rigs with my pouches that I'm used to, that I've uh, practiced with and set up, and I don't want to have to put those old school shirts with all the buttons and stuff down the front. I want to be able to carry on with a combat shirt, but not get freezing bloody cold. So that's where the proper comes in. But then it's just that that issue of, uh, you know, at the end of the day, you can't really have an item of clothing that is brilliant in the cold and in the hot. You just can't physically design it, really. That's why we have layering systems. So, yeah, if, if you want if you want that adaptability, that comfort in the winter of a combat shirt that you are, you know, in the style that you're used to for probably most of the rest of the year, when it's still either middle temperatures or hot, then that's when you want to go for the proper, but don't go for it for wearing in the summer. It's it's sturdily built, it's good solid materials, lots of pockets, good features, well thought out, well designed, but it's hot. You will sweat in this thing. I mean, you know, I, I tried it for a day. It was about a month ago. Um, we had a pretty hot day. I was out in this thing running around and I... I, I noticed the difference compared to, uh, say, a British issue MTP combat shirt, or compared to a true spec here, or um, various other combat shirts that I've got. You just straight away, I was just running around and I was thinking, bloody hell, you know, I'm just just very very aware of how much I'm sweating and how much body heat is being retained by this thing. So that's that's the key point I wanted to make with this, guys. But overall, not a bad product at all. Very well made. Um, so yeah, uh, that's that for the TACU combat shirt from Proper in the ATAX FG. Uh, hope you enjoyed the video, guys. Uh, if you want more gear reviews like this, please do subscribe. Uh, I've got a Facebook page as well. If you click down in the uh, description down there, I'll put a link to it. And I'll see you next time.